Welcome to my new video on how to design an Instagram story template in Affinity Designer. A template in Affinity Designer that features a mix of layouts you can use to create Instagram stories. You do know what an Instagram story is, I trust. It's a series of panels, each of a specific size, that will display for five seconds. So if you've got five or six of these in a row, let's say six by five seconds, that's a 30 second or half a minute story that you can put. Very useful and very good. Great for promoting your business. Start with a supplied template or make your own. So starting with one template, you can create many designs, looks and layouts. Adding content to an Instagram story template in Designer. The sample story layouts are on separate panels like artboards. There are two fonts used, PT Serif and Lato Heavy. Each artboard is 1080 by 1920 pixels. To match the dimensions of an Instagram story, they have to be that size, that's the Instagram rules. You'll update the placeholders with your own text, graphics or photos, as you see fit. So let's start with making your own template. You can use the one I supply, but if you actually begin by making your own, you'll have a much better idea of how this works. So start with a new document in the presets. We're going to create a custom preset and call it Instagram Story Panel Template. Fairly straightforward. It should be 18, uh, 1080 by 1920 pixels in size. You may think you've got six of them in a row, it needs to be bigger, but we'll get to that. Just start with this size. 300 dpi, transparent background and artboard are all selected. You can see on the right hand side there in the image. Press OK to create the new document. And the resulting canvas, you can see the document clearly and its default name is Artboard 1. <laughs> and why not? Now we add the other artboards. Select the command menu, gives you the drop down um, options there and you need to then go to artboards. Now remember that we're selecting that 1080, 1920 pixel size. Select artboards and the context toolbar appears down the bottom there. Now if you look closely at that you'll see there's a plus sign on the right hand side it says insert artboard. Tap insert artboard to automatically create the next board. Continue to tap insert artboard to automatically create the next board until you have all six artboard one through to artboard six. Now we're going to name the artboards. So in the layers panel, open that up, go to the commands menu of the layers panel, that's the three dots, select each artboard and rename it. This becomes important when you want to export them. The names can take a moment to actually change when you do this, so rename all six. And you can see what I've got there, title card zero, card 1, card 2, card 3 and so on and they disappear off the side. Now select the first artboard and drag out a rectangle to cover it and colour it black. At this point we're going to create a document we can embed later on. So save and exit this document. We're going to create another document that we're going to embed an image in. So when it adds to this document it will become an embedded document. Very useful. So create a new document, you can see it there, and create a light grey circle on a transparent rectangle that's 968 pixels square. To fill the shape of the photo, because it will be an embedded document, you can drag an image onto the circle so that the new image is just above the ellipse layer. Use the move tool to position the image within the circle by dragging it down so the blue line is halfway down the icon 
and release that layer and it will look like I've got on the right hand side there. Your image will now be masked by the grey circle. Save it with a memorable name. That's the whole file, something like girlwithflowers.afdesigner maybe. This will be your embedded image in the main document when we get to embed it. Now circular images are fun and stylish but photos are generally rectangular and this is where clipping masks come in handy. If you're creating a pure template, don't include the image. Just leave the circle blank, a grey blank. Save and close this document and then reopen the main template document and select title card zero. So you've got this file saved and you've reopened your original document and selected card zero. Back in this artboard document, we need to place the circle image within certain boundaries or margins, with or without the girl image in it, remember. You can just put the grey circle in there. So let's set a top margin or horizontal guide at 200 pixels and a side or vertical guide at 828 pixels. They're the bounds of the circle or the, the, the square shape you'll see with the circle in it. Move the layer to snap to these guides on the top and right sides. And you can see the measurements there in the guides uh, context toolbar of the two, the two ruler guides. Now select place from the documents menu and locate your grey circle image with or without the girl image in it and select it. Place it on the artboard layer as shown. So that document you created will be in your Affinity Designer um, saving folder. Well, I hope you saved it because it won't be there when you go back if you didn't. <laughs> so you select that file and place it on the artboard and adjust its position so that it snaps to those guides you just put in. Next we place some text, a ruler line and some more text onto the artboard. You can see its position there. I put them in a group and begin the first line at the guide at 1276 pixels. You can see I've got a guide bar drawn across there and the first lorem ipsum text just touches that line and it goes to the right hand side to the black, the edge of the black. Note that the image is actually an embedded document. It's the girl with flowers.af designer document I created earlier. You can just put an image in there but the advantage of this is you can have an image created somewhere that you use again and again in different situations and you're not forever having to redesign it. Now the rectangle formed by the text group is aligned with the right side of the artboard. I used filler text to visualize where titles and short messages could appear throughout the design. Now you can choose the type tool and double click the text to replace it with your own words. Adjust the character panels settings to customize the text line spacing or color. And you can see I'm using PT Serif Italic. Say it with flowers. Use tracking equals 25 and leading over is 125. It just helps spread the text out. Now the next card, card 1, has a top margin of 200 pixels. And using a guideline to position a grey rectangle. Its vertical position is 278 pixels. Add a small triangle from the shapes tool and a text block marker below that. Four lines of lorem ipsum text. Now, card two is next. Place a black rectangle background first. The next part of that, some lines of text into the frame. Lorem ipsum dola sit amets. 
and you can put what you like in there but that's placeholder text so you know that it's not just a black background but it will have some text on it keep in mind that this is an Instagram story so the text has to be minimal and easy to read it's no good putting the works of Shakespeare on there because in five seconds you're never going to read it now next is card number three place a white background rectangle first and you can see in the in the uh, drop panel the layers panel that these are starting to take shape card 301 add a gray rectangle on top of the background card 302 place some lines of text for place markers and the little triangle icon on to card 4 for this one I've drawn a white rectangle background three grey rectangles evenly spaced and the text place marker the top margin in this case is at 228 pixels so your frame spread out below that now finally card 5 is a little fancier black background rectangle grey rectangle on top a white circle overlaying both and a small white down pointing arrow there's two rows of text place markers well probably three if you if you look at the at lorem ipsum and then the swipe up to read more text the midpoint of the circle is at 579 pixels which also marks the bottom edge of the grey box now there's the finished template you can see there's three six um, templates there and they're very specifically templates there's nothing particularly written in there you can change that for each story so you're not redesigning the whole thing you're just changing what's on those templates the advantage of this is that people will begin to recognize your templates if you use the same story template each time with different content of course people will begin to recognize that hey ah there's there's one of these little stories from such and such and they start to look for them in the end if you're continually chopping and changing and people don't recognize your work it makes you difficult to find and being easily findable and recognizable is the key now an example Instagram story pages you'll find me and this example on Instagram at ra.charmers on Instagram there and you can see the five templates six templates sorry the first one there's the girl with flowers design photo on publish story one five seconds the next one five seconds five seconds five seconds five seconds and five seconds six fives are 30 seconds now there's your little story if you're really good at telling stories you can get your entire message across in those six little panels now when you're ready to post your story select export and sec select the format to JPG select each artboard in turn from the output drop down menu when it says export it will come up and give you the name and the whole document well click on whole document and select for example title card 00, zero. you'll need to type them in as the export tries to put the entire project name on all documents now you don't want don't want them all called project one project two project three give the you have to give them each a name it's a bit of a problem at the moment i think with um uh, affinity designer on the ipad in that it won't export those images individually unless you select them individually and then you've got to name them individually but that's not a major problem to post on Instagram you'll need to get those exported images into your phone now to do this you're probably aware of how to do it already I just use Apple Photos because I'm on a Mac and an iPhone and an iPad and it all just 
gels together very nicely. Each static image will appear in the story for 5 seconds. Mix video with images to enhance your story. Have fun! See you on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.